action. When I was in high school 20 years ago, there were three openly gay people, and that was it. It was two black guys and one lesbian girl. And right now, depending on what statistic you look to, will look at, depending on the study, it says about 25% of our children right now are non-binary or identify as anything other than what they were designed to be. And I, like, I got so confused because I can't believe this is the world that we live in. But when you take a deep breath and you look around, you say, holy, this is the world that we live in. There are men who are pretending to be women, and there are women who say, that's fine, you can be a woman just like me. You can have a whole nine-inch pecker, and you can be just like me. You can pretend to have a baby, and you can pretend to have a period, and that's the world that we exist in, right? So as a little boy, I always went to church. You know, I'm sitting next to my good holy Bible. This thing is just about as old as the owner is, and it's as, it's as beat up as the owner is, too. And I was going to church in Sunday school. I was told a story about Abraham and Lot in, in, in Sodom. And the story of Sodom, it gets so dark. I would read it because it's one of the most fascinating stories in the Bible, but I'm not going to read it to you. That's not good theater. It's not good entertainment. And this is beyond entertainment, but I think that we need to have open and honest conversations about what's happening to our families, what's happening to America, and to our children, honestly. I mean, just look at the state of the nation right now. OnlyFans is legal prostitution. That's all it is. And so lots of young women in our society they're giving themselves away to a screen and they're making profit from it. And there are millions of men sitting behind a screen who are pleasuring themselves as they watch our children, our young women uh, openly exploit themselves. This is the exchange. And so when you look at how our relationships are being so damaged, young women are over here and young men are over here because everybody in the history of the world always knows the value of some good Gina. Yes, uh, a woman has inherent value because every man wants to mate with these women. But now men, you have to be able to earn your value. You have to be able to show that you can provide so that you can get some of these wonderful women. Well, now that we have this class divide in America and so many men on this side, they're suffering because they don't have the skills and they're not the industries available to make these men economically viable options for all these women who are looking for men to support them. And so since the men don't have the economics to, to, to provide for these women, these women are choosing to provide for themselves, and they're using the oldest, oldest trick in the book. They're selling their sweet bodies. And as we watch this stuff descend upon our culture and we see all this immorality, we're looking at it, this whole situation from, a, from the lens of money. We're only looking at our situation in America economically. And so since we have to live and since we have to eat and since our kids need clothes and since baby needs a new car and we have to buy a house, which doesn't apply for like 50 percent of Americans because Americans are really suffering right now. When we don't have the ability to buy homes, our, our, the dollar has been so, so beat up by by continuous borrowing and inflation that we're having a hard time simply existing. And so in America, the solution to everything is always money. It's never going back to the good book because so many pastors have used this good book for profit. I've seen men in my life use the Bible and talk about God to put money in their pockets. And when I watch these charlatans, I'm like, I don't want to be a part of that institution. And so many men of my age have walked away from the church because the church turned into the place that when Jesus walked in, he was mad. He said, these money changers in here who are using my father's name to make a dollar, and that's happening in America. So many pastors use the Lord's name in vain just so they can get some money. And as you're watching this holy collapse, this whole collapse happen to America, I start to think about when I was a kid in this book, and I think about Sodom. And it's one of the most important passages that I ever read, right? It's when Abraham starts to negotiate with God, and I'm paraphrasing, but Abraham said, hey, God, you're the creator of everything in the whole entire world. How dare you judge righteous people along with wicked people? Aren't you the righteous God of all the earth? I'm paraphrasing. I should read it directly from the text, but Abraham is negotiating with the almighty creator, and you know what God does? God listens. And as I'm seeing all these bad things happen in my nation, happen to the, the people in America, these wonderful individuals, I'm like, 
hey man, I know there's some good people in America. I'm like, dear God, if there are just 50 good people in America, will you please save this place? Will you not send a fire and destruction to America? Will you prevent us from the nuclear bombs? I mean, that's the parallel. If you look at our society in the biblical text, fire and brimstone is going to be nuclear bombs that destroy the American people based on our behavior, based on our greed and taking advantage of other civilizations, other nations, other people. This is the plight of America. This is what we're doing. And so when I look at that story in the context of Sodom, and I'm looking at uh, a good, good men negotiating on behalf of bad men, and then I just let the story play out. Because Abraham got all the way down to 10 men as he was negotiating with God and asking God to save this place called Sodom because his, his nephew Lot lived there. And so when God left, he left Abraham in peace and Abraham was able to make the negotiation. But then God sent two angels to go see Lot, right? They go to Sodom. And so, and so Lot tells these two uh, angels, he said, nah, y'all can't go to town square. I need you to come home with me. I got to take you back to my house. This is the actual story. You go read it. I'm paraphrasing directly from the Holy Bible. Now, the angels, these two big, majestic angels, they argue. They argue with Lot. They say, no, we want to go to town square. Lot says, that's not a good idea. We're going home. So they go home. Now, this is where I got really puzzled. When I was a kid, when I heard this story, I said, this is impossible. There's no way this is in the Bible. It's not true. This is not a true story. But according to the Bible, all the men in, the, in, the, in Sodom, they came to, to Lot's house and they beat on his door a mob of men. And they said, hey, you send out those two men, those two beautiful men, because we want to have sex with them. This is what the, in the Bible, a group of men went to Lot's house and said, you bring out those two angels. They didn't know they were angels. They just saw men, beautiful men, and said, you bring those two men to us so that we can have sex with them. I was like, ain't no way in the history of the world would no men, a group of men, go to a man's house and say, we want some booty. That would never happen. But when you read the story in Genesis, yes, it does happen. It happens. And that tells you, that tells you the state of, of what Sodom was. That tells you where they were. And now I'm not here to tell no person they can't be gay. You're not supposed to be gay. I don't give a damn what you do with your body. But when you're, will, when you're willing to come to a house as a mob and to take some booty, it, 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 I get alarmed. When I watch these people have conversations, when I see drag queens going to schools and, have, and reading uh, stories to children, I get alarmed as a father. I'm like, hold on, what is this doing? A drag queen is a, per number one, it's a performer. And number two, oh, I don't even know what, it, I don't know what you are. You're dressing up, you're playing pretend, and you like to indulge in lewd acts. I can't judge you for being who or what you are, but I can judge you for trying to impose those ideas on children. I can, I can get angry at you when you try to force your thoughts upon me. I don't want to think that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to have none of that drag queen, trans, LGBTQ stuff around me because that's not my ideology. That's not what I believe. That's not from my faith, my upbringing, and how my parents raised me. That's not what I want in my life whatsoever. But instead of, instead of me being able to say no, we have groups of people. We even have the American government saying, yes, it's okay. Barack Obama is the gayest president in the history of the world because he's a family man with two beautiful daughters and a beautiful wife. And instead of fighting for families and fighting for religious equality so that I can stand up and say, I don't want these ideas to be brought upon my children. You know what he did? He said, everybody can be gay. And so now 25% of, of little children in America identify as non-binary. We've gotten so far away from, from spiritual and religious text that now we accept what Ever nonsense that the world brings to us and i'm asking and i'm praying is there any good men who are willing to negotiate for america because i don't think america is about to be destroyed i think there are good people who are going to stand up and fight for families i think there are good people going to stand up and fight for children i think we have wonderful people who will stand up for right especially in this battle between good and evil i had things that i wanted to say I had things on my heart, but there's nothing on my heart more than good people doing good things to protect families and protect children. That makes sense to me. Grown people being able to have whatever their sexual experiences are 
that doesn't bother me. Like, that's not my concern. I could care less if you come or you don't. Orgasms are optional, but good people, damn, we have to stand up and fight against these nasty ass ideas in America. Who will survive in America? Who will defeat evil in America? The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.